everybody, Yankee here. Today I'm going to do a little ballistics testing because I want to be able to answer a question from a viewer. I had a viewer send me an email regarding the differences between 22 WMR, 22 Magnum, and 5.7 by 28 as far as self-defense is concerned. Now, they said that they believed 5.7 by 28 must be more powerful, but as they were doing their research, they were finding that the nicer 22 Magnums had pretty much the same ballistics. If you looked at something like the Hornady VMAX from uh, FN in the 5.7 by 28 and the Federal Premiums in the 22s, you're going to be seeing 40 grain bullets traveling at pretty much the same speed, around 2,100 feet per second. And if physics served them well, you know, their physics course in high school, that was going to give you the same result, same velocity, same energy, etc. Well, there's a little bit of a misconception there and a little bit of tricky numbers you have to deal with there. First off, you know, it's easy to think 22 Magnum and 5.7 by 28 are very similar. I mean, you go to the range and you shoot things like apples. At least I know I do. You shoot them with a 5.7 and you shoot them with a 22. You don't see a lot of difference, the 22 Magnum and the 5.7, difference between them. Uh, then you shoot water bottles. You know, they both explode pretty nice. Uh, so you don't really see a big difference there either. So you think, wow, then they must be actually performing the same. Those numbers are pretty much right because I can't really see much difference between the way they're performing and their ballistics uh, figures are pretty much the same. Well, that's not the case. There are differences, quite substantial differences. Uh, and you can't really see them with the naked eye at the range all that well. Uh, now, if you were doing actual penetration tests with hard barriers, etc., you'd see the differences. But just shooting things like water bottles, apples, watermelons, even meat, it's not going to really show you the real differences. Because first off, the ballistics numbers on these rounds are very tricky. Uh, there's quite a bit of difference in how they rate them. If you look at the 40 grain 22 Magnum, that's usually being tested out of a 24 inch barrel. So that really isn't going to relate to what you would probably carry for self-defense because you're not going to carry a handgun with a 24-inch barrel. Same thing with the 5.7, but not as big a difference because if you look at the testing numbers on the 5.7, it's usually tested out of a 10 to a 10 and a half inch barrel. And that's because that's the barrel that's common on the modern rifles that use the 5.7. So a little bit of a difference right there just because they're testing them out of different barrels. So if you want to get the ballistics down, you're going to have to actually do some of your own testing. Now, when I tested the 22 Magnum out of one of my guns, and I don't have perfectly the same size guns. The guns I have that I can use are my Ruger single six for 22 Magnum and my FN 5.7 for uh, 5.7 by 28. So the 5.7's only got like a four and three quarter inch barrel, whereas the single six has almost six and a half inch barrel. So a little bit of a difference in barrel lengths, but it will give you a little bit more comparable number so you can compare them uh, as they would perform out of a gun you might actually carry. So if we look at the testing here, when I did the testing of the 22 Magnum, I ended up with about 1,360 feet per second on average. And then when I tested the 5.7 by 28, I ended up with an average of 1,780. So that's quite a big difference there. That's like a 35% difference in power, 35% advantage for the 5.7. Uh, when you looked at the numbers on the boxes, it looked like they perform about the same. But when you put them in more similar guns, the difference becomes far more evident. And if these barrels were closer to the same size, the 5.7 would even have a bigger advantage. Uh, that's actually being kind of generous, that 1360, because like I said, six and a half inch barrel, you're probably going to carry something that's four inch barrel or less with a 22 Magnum, maybe even a snubby. So you wouldn't get numbers that good. So you're probably looking at least a 40% advantage for the 5.7 by 28. So when it comes to velocity and energy, the 5.7 by 28 is better especially when it comes to penetrating hard barriers like bones. Both rounds will perform pretty well in gel or 
meat, soft tissue, etc. But the 5.7 by 28 will have a much better chance of penetrating bone if you hit a rib, etc. And not deflecting out of the body. So it does have an advantage when it comes to power, you know, initial upfront power, and also that extra velocity gives you more range. At these numbers here, using these ballistics, if you wanted to shoot accurately at distance and you wanted to stay within like a 10 to 12 inch drop, you know, because more than that, you might be missing your target. Well, with the 22 Magnum, you're gonna be able to shoot relatively accurately up to about 150 yards. With the 5.7 by 28, you're going to be able to shoot out to about 200 yards. So that's going to give you, once again, about a third of a difference, uh, a 33% advantage with the 5.7 by 28. So it has an advantage there also. There's also some design advantages to the 5.7 by 28 over the 22 Magnum. If we look at them side by side again, you'll see some of the differences here. One, the 5.7 is bottlenecked. That does help with feeding. Another thing that helps with feeding in semi-automatic guns is that it is rimless. It's a rimless cartridge. So you don't have to worry about stacking it a certain way or getting it to feed properly. As you can see, the 22 Magnum has a rim. It's a rimmed cartridge. So it is harder to create higher capacity guns. If you see a, a magazine fed gun, it's usually 10 rounds or less. And it's usually around eight to 10 rounds, depending on the size of the revolver. If it's a revolver, you can get 20 rounds, 30 rounds and up in the 5.7 by 28. So it definitely has that capacity advantage. And talking about the rim on the 22, that not only makes it uh, harder to feed, but that's how it's fired, it's rim fired. Whereas the 5.7 is a center fire cartridge. And no matter how you want to look at it, rim fires are not as reliable as center fires. Center fired rounds are just more reliable. And this is where someone comes on and goes, I've fired 10 million 22s and never had a failure. Well, you're just telling everybody you're a liar if you do that. Uh, anytime anybody says that 22 rim fire is just as reliable as a center fire round, first thing I think is this person has never really shot guns. Uh, they just read stuff on the internet. So it may not be a big difference, but it is a difference. So it's more reliable. Some other differences between these two rounds is the 22 Magnum is going to be less expensive. They're cheaper. You can usually get them for, you know, 15 cents a round and up. And if you want to go real expensive, you can spend like 75, 80 cents a round. The 5.7, little bit different there. The price on those are quite a bit higher. Even if you want to go cheap, you're going to be spending 60 cents a round. And you can easily spend $1.50 a round, $2 a round, and even more if you want some discontinued ammo. So the 5.7 is much more expensive than the 22. Also, the 22 is far more available. It's more common. There's just more of it out there. And that's a good thing. But it can be a bad thing also because if there's a run, if there's a shortage, 22 goes fast. We've seen that happen in the past. Remember the 22 shortage not too long ago where you just couldn't get 22. People lined up around buildings to get it. So the very fact that it is common and popular is great when times are good, but it can work against it when times are bad. The 5.7 by 28 being kind of a niche cartridge doesn't seem to be as affected by runs on ammo or fear buying, you know, panic buying. So it can have some stability in a bad market, but in a good market, like I said, it's just going to cost more and be harder to find. So when we take all of this into account and we look at the pros and cons of both rounds, I think it's very easy to see which one is better for self-defense. If you look at the 22 Magnum, the pros are, you know, it's very common, like I said, which in good times is a great thing. In bad times, that can be bad, but most of the time, that's going to be a good thing. It's inexpensive. That's always a good thing. And another advantage that we really didn't talk about is that there are more guns chambered in it. You're going to have a wider selection to choose from when it comes to choosing your carry gun. So that's a pro. Now, if we look at the cons, well, you're going to have less initial power which is gonna give you less overall range. The gun is a rimmed cartridge, so it is gonna be harder to get guns that have higher capacity, so it is gonna have less capacity than a 5.7 by 28. And since it is rim fire, and it is kind of a tricky round to get the feed properly if it's in a semi-auto, you're gonna have overall a less reliable gun. And that right there can be a killer for some people right there, even if it's just a little bit less reliable. 
Now, if you look at the 57 by 28, the pros are more initial power, especially uh, does really well with hard barrier penetration compared to 22 Magnum, like bones. More range, it's gonna give you accuracy at longer distance. You can get guns with a higher capacity. And since it is a center fire, rimless round, it's gonna be more reliable. It's gonna be something you can trust a little bit more than you can that rim-fired, rimmed 22 Magnum. Now, it does have some cons, though. It is less common, harder to find, like we said. Not that hard, but harder than the 22. And it is considerably more expensive than 22. I mean, you can shoot 22 for a fifth, a sixth, a tenth of the price you can, 5.7 by 28. So definitely more expensive. And also, there's just fewer guns chambered in it. Now, recently, there's been a slew of new guns coming out. Everything from Palmetto State, Smith & Wesson, etc., so it used to be you just pretty much had the FNs. Now you actually do have more of a choice, but still not as many guns chambered in this round as are chambered in the 22. So when you look at all these numbers here, I think it's pretty clear which one you should choose for self-defense. And that is neither of them. There's far better calibers out there that are more powerful, give you better performance, and hold just about as many rounds as a 5.7 by 28 gun. Nine millimeter is a better choice. 15 rounds of 9mm is better than 20 rounds of 5.7 by 28. That's just the reality. And 9mm ain't nothing to write home about. But it's still better than either of these rounds. But if you're going to choose one of these rounds for self-defense, I think it's pretty clear that the better choice, unless you take budget into concern, and I think when you're defending your life, hopefully budget is not going to be your top concern. I think that by far the better round for self-defense would be the 5.7 by 28, and I would be willing to defend that opinion against anyone, anytime.